Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss what is auditing. Now, if you're taking an auditing course, an introduction to auditing course or auditing and attestation at an undergraduate or graduate level, the first thing you want to know is what is auditing? Well, in this session, we will exactly define this term. So what does auditing entails? Well, it entails the collecting of evidence. You need to look for evidence related to information aiming to assess and report on how well this information conforms to a predetermined standard or established criteria. So there's a lot of information in this statement. One is evidence. We need evidence. What is evidence? A proof for something. For what purpose? To generate a report. What is that report about? That report is to measure your evidence against a set of criteria. What is that criteria? We're going to discuss each one of these terms separately today. However, we have to keep in mind that the person that conduct the audit, which is the auditor, they have to be skilled, which is they know what they're doing, and most importantly, impartial. Impartial means independent. For your report to carry any weight, to be trusted by the users, you as an auditor will have to be independent. Now, each term that I highlighted in yellow on this slide, I will go over briefly in this session to give you the big picture. Now, each term highlighted on this slide, listen to me carefully, will consume 10 to 15 different lectures. Each lecture might be 10 to 15 minutes to explain the topics more in depth. So this is just an overview of what is auditing. You will see this topic when you are taking an introduction to, to auditing course. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Well, one of the things that we mentioned in, on the previous slide is established criteria. What does that mean? It means we have to measure, measure our evidence against something. So we collected evidence. Well, how do we collect evidence? Do we collect evidence randomly? Just we pull things from the hat, just, you know, this is the evidence that we're going to be using. And if we collect the evidence, what are we measuring the evidence against? This is what we mean by established criteria. So what is the criteria? Well, the criteria will differ from audit to audit, depending on what you are auditing. For some audits, your criteria must could be, for example, in the, in the United States, is generally accepted auditing principles or GAP. If you are conducting an audit based on international standard, your standard, your established criteria is IFRS, the International Financial Reporting Standard. Now, bear in mind, those are criteria for the audit, not the audit tools. What, what do we follow when we conduct an audit? Well, we follow generally accepted auditing standards. That's totally different. This is we're looking at the criteria, the measurement. What are we measuring our performance against? Now, if you are conducting an audit for the IRS, you will follow the IRS audit rules, depending on what your audit is. Audit requires verifiable information and set of criteria for evaluation. So the information, the evidence that you select has to be verifiable and it has to be compared, measured against some criteria. We're going to have all sorts of data, various types of data that we can audit from financial statement to system effectiveness, so on and so forth. So we can audit practically anything and anything will have some sort of a standard. Now in an auditing course, like an undergraduate auditing course, you're going to be auditing financial statements. And in the U.S., your criteria will be generally accepted accounting principle. What do you need to do? You need to collect evidence. As an auditor, evidence. What is evidence? Evidence is used to check if the audited information aligned with the criteria. So I need to collect some sort of proof. And ev evidence could come in diverse forms. Now, in terms of evidence, we are going to have literally maybe 20 lectures. We already have 20 lectures in my course about evidence. What type of evidence? How to collect evidence? Ev evidence procedures. And each one of them will be separated into four or five lectures. So evidence comes in different, trans different forms. Transaction data, 
communication record, observation, and oral statements, as well as many, many other types of data. So as a student later on, you need to kind of evaluate which data fits this scenario, which data has more credibility, because not all evidence will be equal. Certain evidence will carry more weight than the other, and this is what we will be discussing later. So auditor gather evidence that what we call sufficient and appropriate, and we'll have one whole session explaining what sufficient and appropriate. Just know acceptable evidence for now, for other purpose, adequate evidence. And we need to assess if the data matches criteria, well, if the, if the evidence matches the criteria, and this is the key aspect in audit. What we collected, does it match the criteria that we are measuring ourselves against? Now, not anyone can collect evidence. You have to have an auditor, and the auditor has to be competent. They know what they're doing, and most importantly, they have to be impartial. What is impartial? It means they have to be independent. To maintain users' trust, the auditor must prioritize independence. If the auditor is not independent, the audit is useless. Why? Because you cannot trust the outcome. The reason for the audit is to give you an opinion about something. Well, if that opinion, if the person that's giving you the opinion is not, is not independent, like think about this. Would you trust the, the opinion of a used of a, of a car salesperson? Nothing wrong with car salespeople. Just simply put, they're not gonna they're not gonna give you an independent opinion. They're gonna give you an opinion, they're gonna give you something that's gonna help them sell the product. So it's not independent. So you want someone who's impartial. Those assessing financial statements are called independent auditors. They are called independent for a reason. The, otherwise, if they are not independent, the whole audit is literally worthless. Even if you are an internal auditor, internal auditor will also have to be independent in the sense that internal auditors, what they do, they don't report to management because internal auditors are auditors that audit the company internally. Those individuals, we're going to see what type of auditors we have. We have internal, external. But even if you are an internal auditor, you have to be independent from management. How do you be independent? You report to the board of director. You report to a level above management. So you maintain your independence. And the auditor must understand the criteria and evidence complexity to draw accurate conclusion. You have to be competent. You have the evidence. You collected the evidence. Do you understand what evidence you are looking at? So you draw the proper conclusion. You can be, if you are not unbiased, even, let's assume you are competent. If you are competent, but you are not independent, the evidence is not good because I cannot trust it. You're, you're a competent individual. You have an, you know, unbiased means you have to be independent in mind and in fact. It means really independent and appear to be independent. And we'll talk about that later. Again, guess what? One whole lecture about this term independence, maybe two. Okay, so skill alone loses value with bias during evidence gathering. You have to be both competent and independent. At the end of the day, as an auditor, you have to issue a report. The last thing is to issue a report, sharing the outcome, sharing your opinion about what, what you are doing. And we're going to look at many types of report, maybe 20 to 25. Some of them will be attestation, non-attestation, compilation, review, so on and so forth. Just know at the end we issue a report. report reports vary. But they must reveal how closely audited information aligned with the criteria. So in every report, you're going to look at this is what we did and this is the criteria and whether the, we're going to give a clean opinion or not clean opinion. We'll talk about that later. Format ranges from complex financial audit to basic verbal reports for small operational units. We're going to have many, many types of reports. Again, from auditing a unit, how it operates, to auditing complex financial statements. So this is basically an introduction to what? Introduction to auditing. What is auditing? This is the big picture. Now let's take a look at multiple choice for, at the multiple choice questions from Farhat Lectures, where you can find more of those at my website, farhatlectures.com, under the auditing course. Which of the following statement is correct regarding regarding the audit process? Let's start with D. The auditor collects record to determine whether the audited financial statement is according with the SEC standards. So when we audit financial statements, do we use SEC standards? Not at all. We follow generally accepted auditing principle. Those are the standards that we follow. Therefore, D is out. Let's move to C. The criteria for evaluating information would remain the same regardless of the information being audited. Absolutely not. The criteria will change from one audit to the other. Sometimes you're auditing an information system. Sometimes you're auditing financial statements. Sometimes you are auditing the efficiency of, an, of, an, of, an, of the internal control. So the criteria will differ from audit to audit. 
The types and amount of evidence are consistent from audit to audit. Not at all. Depending on what type of opinion you are giving, certain opinion, you would require more evidence than other opinion. Therefore, the amount of evidence, the reliability of the evidence will differ from audit to audit. Therefore, B is out by the process of elimination. A is the correct answer. And what does A state? The audit report informed users about the auditor's finding. Exactly. At the end of the day, the auditor will inform the users in the form of a report about what did they find and how did they phrase this. Here's the criteria that we used. This is the evidence that we collected. Do they match? What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures. Look at additional MCQs. If you are an auditing student, you want to invest in your career. Look, I have hundreds of lectures and, multiple, and thousands of MCQs that's going to help you do well in your course. Invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.